So, I really, really wanted to enjoy No Rest for the Wicked, but there are quite a few reasons as to why I don't actually enjoy it. Some of you are going to, but I know a lot of people are going to expect more than what's actually delivered with this game. And I will say, if you are ever planning to pick this one up, then grab it right now because the price will be going up, and I still feel right now is too expensive and before we get any further into the video i want to give a massive thank you to the guys at private division and the guys at keymailer for hooking me up with the key to play the game which means i haven't spent any money on it thankfully because this game is a disaster and the reason i say that i, I say that quite lightly because it's not a full-blown catastrophic mess but it is a disaster because there's pointless systems in the game, there's things that don't make sense for this style of game, and the biggest thing for me, it absolutely blows my mind, is before you even get into the game, they put a, like a pop-up on your screen, and it tells you they've poured their hearts and souls into this game over six years, and they've launched it into early access with what seems to be less than half of what they want this game to go into the full release with, and they've released this across playstation they've released it across xbox only ps5 xbox series xs has not gone to the ps4 or the xbox one but it's also available on steam and in early access this game is going to cost you 35 pounds so it's like a 40 dollar game but they say in the notes for early access we are planning on a discounted price during early access that will then increase once the game hits 1.0 and leaves early access. So by the time this game launches into 1.0, whenever that may be, they are going to increase the price. So it's probably going to go to like a $50, $60 game. But not only that, the thing that, like one of the things that really gets me is this game I played on the PC, yet they have no rebindable controls and they heavily suggest that you play with a controller. But on top of that when you go to your settings you have the option to play in quality mode or performance mode so it's got fucking console features all over the pc version of the game so i don't even think this was ever actually planned to come to pc they just quickly made a pc port and kept a load of console stuff there and when it comes to what's available in the early access version listen to this because bear in mind six years they have worked on this or they claim they have worked on this what's in early access a rich first chapter of the narrative campaign people are saying it's around 15 to 25 hours so we'll average it at a 20 hour experience additional quests that reveal more about the world and its inhabitants intense boss battles against plague-ridden creatures a large variety of weapons armor skills and crafting options gear can be upgraded enchanted ruined and gemmed to create your ideal character build purchasing and furnishing of a modifiable home daily and weekly bounties and challenges replayable serum crucible dungeon so that's taken them six years to develop and this is what they want in the version 1.0 they want to add four player co-op into the game they want pvp in the game they want expanded story content and chapters they want additional map regions they want farming they want more weapons armor rare items and gear they want new enemies and bosses and they want additional crucible floors bounties and challenges so they've basically created half a game and it's taken them six years they then say under the section that says approximately how long would this game be in early access the feature roadmap shown on this page is the main outline for early access we are excited about the road ahead and we'd love to receive your suggestions and feedback while we have an idea of how long early access development should be this may change based on feedback and the desire to reach the moon level of quality we'll be sharing updates along the way so nowhere do they tell you how long they think is going to be in early access for their roadmap doesn't explain it they never put it in the actual section where it like asks you to let people know how long your game's going to be in early access and the roadmap just says steam early access launch update one multiplayer update two the breach further updates that's it there's no explanation to anything and this game has over 10,000 reviews on Steam, sitting as 65% positive. So it's a mixed reviewed game. But I jumped in, I played about 45 minutes till I gave up with it because it just doesn't feel right for 
the game is like what they're basically describing this game to be. This is from the award-winning developers of Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And they said, with that comes No Rest for the Wicked, a visceral precision action RPG set to reinvent the genre. There ain't no way the genre is moving forward with the stuff they've put into this game. Absolutely no way. You have campfires in this game that you can only cook food at. You cannot replenish your health. In order to gain health back, you need to actually cook food. The whole healing system is based on food. And I've been reading through a lot of the reviews because I didn't play too much. And somebody said that they went through to a boss fight, got their ass handed to them, when you respawn, if you've used your healing stuff, that doesn't go back to that respawn with you. You then have to track back, you have to go and find more healing stuff, put together your food, and then go back into the boss fight. So there's time-wasting stuff. They've put out two hot fixes for this game already. Because this game is designed to be played on a controller, when it comes to mouse and keyboard, there are some really dodgy keybinds, and you cannot change these. The developers over six years never added the ability to change your keybind. And when it comes to gathering materials, you actually have to find an axe to chop down trees, a pickaxe to mine ores. I do like the fact that there's a fishing rod in there, you can go fishing and stuff. But every little item, you have to press a button, you have to collect the loot, and it just, it gets frustrating the amount you have to farm. Or not even farm, the amount you have to gather. You have to pick up a mushroom, then you have to pick up a leaf, and then you have to put them together to make a bit of food. Then you have to go around collecting one coin at a time. Every now and then you might be lucky to get three coins in a pile. But there are just so many mechanics in this game that just, there's nothing to this game. Like there's so many mechanics that shouldn't be there. There's so many mechanics that should work a lot better. Especially, like they are saying themselves, they want to reinvent the genre. They want to make this game to where the genre continues going forward. They want other developers to take a leaf out of their book and they have made worse systems than what's already in games of a similar style. There is nothing to the stats. The stats is just your typical generic stat menu. You level up your health, you level up your stamina, you level up your strength, you level up your dexterity. They haven't done anything that could reinvent it. They've, they've done nothing creative with the stats whatsoever. And then on top of that, you have a limited carrying capacity that's incredibly limited. And a lot of people are praising the combat in this game, but I didn't actually find it that enjoyable. Some of it was with, like, the light weapons. I actually quite enjoyed the light weapons, but when you're given a claymore, this gigantic sword... The combat is so slow, if there's multiple enemies, you're going to be taking hits. And these enemies don't hit you lightly. You get hit twice from an enemy, and you're losing like half of your health. And when you die in this game for, I don't know what reason they had to put this mechanic in the game, but when you die, you lose durability on your items, your gear, and your weapons and stuff. They've already had to do a balancing patch to make it cheaper to repair your stuff that you've lost your ability on for dying. So yeah, this game is definitely not for me. Some of you are probably going to enjoy it. The game looks amazing. The sounds are really good. But that's pretty much all this game has going for it. There's nothing new here. Like the art style is fantastic in this game and some of it is enjoyable. But I mean, even at the start of the game, you're told to hold down your sprint button to jump across a gap. And then you go across the hallway, like you go th basically through a room and you see another gap. So you think, oh, OK, I'm, I'm going to jump over that. You fall back into the room below. So you've got to run all the way around again and you have to figure out that you've got to lean up against the wall. You've got to cuddle the wall and sort of strafe your way along it. So this game released into early access on the 18th of April. And just two days later, this is some of the changes they made. You have reduced the durability damage taken, reduced repair costs, increased the drop rate on repair powders, reduce your stamina costs, reduce the fall damage curve, reduce the cost of horseshoe crab and food that includes the horseshoe crab, a balance update for the Serum Crucible boss, changed corpse smeared blade starting from tier 2 to tier 1. They've done loot changes in the form of introducing more weapons into the pre-sacrament loot table. They've also reduced the drop rate of fallen embers. And then it comes to update like early access hotfix 2, which was literally one day later. They've even titled this one, No Rest for the Devs. Well, I mean, if you're going to release a game in this state, you're not going to get any rest. You're going to have to fix it all, early access or not. 
They are charging £35 for this game, expecting to charge more when they release 1.0, taken six years to develop what they have, and have a massive list of more stuff they want to do, without telling anyone roughly how long they think it's going to take. So they've done performance improvements in Hotfix 2, they've increased the durability on tools, tier 1's 100, tier 2's 125, tier 3's 150, they've nerfed the Silver Ring's enchantment and buffed its base stats, They've buffed the, uh, the one of the twins' bosses or whatever by removing Stagger on parry. Then they've done loot changes. They've adjusted food costs to be more balanced in terms of cost to health gained. They've improved drops for clay and other rocks at dig spots. And they've introduced fishing rods to Whittaker's loot table. They've added tool crafting at crafting tables, so there wasn't even the ability to craft tools. Like, there's just so much work they have to do to this game. And that's before they start adding new content into it. And it's already, it's taken six years to get to where they are now. So another thing is that if you're planning to buy this game, you really have to pay attention. Because you only find out that keyboard and mouse isn't recommended by looking at the right side of the screen under the controller support. And you'll only find out that co-op isn't in the game if you look at the section where it says single player Steam Cloud family sharing. And if you look at the notes for early access, if you don't pay attention to that stuff, you go straight down and look at the bit where they have like mentioned the game. You have a whole section on Steam about this game. If you look at that section and scroll to the bottom, it says online multiplayer. Share your world and progress with up to three friends by your side in the campaign's online co-op mode. Every quest, boss, and square foot is theirs to share with you, or they can simply venture off and do as they please. But that's not a feature in the game. That's what they're planning to release before 1.0, which again, we don't know how long it's going to be. And in the category above, the section above, it says a moment's respite. It says you can purchase property, decorate it to make your own, fish on the shores, and then it says till and harvest the land for ingredients to create meals that replenish health and boost stats. Whereas again, you go to the early access notes and it tells you farming's not even in the game. That's something they want to add prior to 1.0. Besides the art style, how like good it looks, and besides the sound and stuff, there really is nothing, in my opinion, going for this game. I would recommend, like, if you're interested in the game, I'd recommend grabbing it now. Like, performance actually sucks quite a lot on this game as well. Something I completely skipped over. You just get random frame drops all the time. I've had the game crash whilst I've tried loading it. Performance isn't there, but if you are interested in this game, I actually recommend buying it now. Because it's 10% off, at least on Steam it's 10% off, so you're going to pay a little over £30. And if you don't buy it now, even at full price, when it releases into 1.0, whenever that may be, they're going to be upping the price. So this could become a £50, £60 game. It could become a like a £50, £60, possibly even $70 title. And I've just had a look. I've been looking through to see how much the game costs on Xbox, and all I can do is apologise. I got that part wrong. I googled it. It said the game's available PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S and PC, whereas it doesn't tell you that early access is PC only. The PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X S versions of the game will only release when the game goes into 1.0. So they've released an early access title on Steam, being the first platform the game's available on, recommended for controller. And with mouse and keyboard controls not being able to be rebounds to the controls that you want to play with. And sometimes that can actually leave people physically unable to play the game. Some people have to have very specific setups on a keyboard, and you can't in this game. Yet it's taken them six years to develop this game. So I don't know what they were doing for five years or 364 days, but it seems as though they've chucked it all together in such a short amount of time. They've not thought anything through. So for what this game is, the fact that they're saying themselves they're trying to reinvent the genre they're bringing in mechanics that don't belong in the genre they're taking steps back from what games in the genre have already done just the gameplay the like poor performance the mechanics it just really put me off i did not enjoy this at all and to be fair even after the editing of this video you guys have probably seen most of what i've actually done in the game i didn't spend long with it at all i knew in a very short amount of time that it's not a game for me some of you are going to enjoy it as i said if you're interested pick it up now because you'll save yourself some money in the long run but yeah it was a big letdown considering they they claim they've taken six years they've poured their hearts and souls into this game over six years and this is the product they release 
And what puts the icing on the cake for me is they've like released the game early access or not. They have released it and you can't skip those fucking cutscenes. I just wanted to jump in and play the game. I didn't want to watch the story. Six years, no skippable cutscenes, no rebinding of your controls, poor performance, silly mechanics, and that is no rest for the wicked. What we're going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about this game in the comments. I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.